Hey guys, Vladimir here. In my last video, I talked about nesting parts for 3D printing in Fusion 360 and demonstrated it with a very specific example, which was my gingerbread man house, gingerbread house uh, holiday card kit. Um, but today, I want to answer a question from uh, one of you. Uh, so, Jorg Balashi asked a question uh, in the comments. Um, so, he wrote, great video. I learned a lot from it. Thank you. Uh, what's the difference between the derive tool and drag and dropping a design from the data panel that creates a link? So, that's an excellent question. And I thought rather than typing uh, an answer in the comment, that this was a good one for me to just kind of, um, you know, pop open Fusion 360 and give a quick little demo to explain it. So, all right, let's jump right in and answer Mr. Balashi's question. Okay, I'm gonna use a simple example here to explain the difference. Let's say I have this uh, front of a pickup truck here, the truck cab, and I have a truck bed that I've already modeled. So what I wanna do is bring that bed into this design here. So the first option here we'll look at is the insert into current design. So you basically right click on the design you have and you click on the insert into current design option and it's gonna bring that model in. I will remind you though that you do have to have this model saved here first. If you don't, Fusion will give you a warning to go ahead and save it. Okay, so I'll just move this truck bed into place here just to roughly get it into uh, where I want it. And there it is. Okay, now that I have it, I want to continue making changes to it. So let's say I want to go ahead and shell this bed here. Um, so I'll go to modify, down to shell click on the top surface here of the bed and you can see nothing happens. Fusion does not allow me to actually change this design. Um, so let me cancel that. So that basically describes one of the big differences there. When you bring a design using the insert option, it doesn't let you modify the model. The only way you can modify the model is if you go back to the original design. So uh, if I open up truck bed here, um, I actually have it open on the uh, tab here, but you can just double click to open it there. All right, now I can just go ahead and apply a shell to the top surface here. So I'll modify shell, choose that surface, uh, just do a one millimeter shell there. That's just the size I made it. I'll click OK, and then you have to click Save. Click OK, and then go back to my truck cabin design here. You'll see you get a little flag up here, and it's going to tell you this uh, part here is out of date. So we'll go ahead and just click on that little yellow triangle and it'll bring over the change and you can see there that it went ahead and applied it. So in a nutshell, uh, when you bring in a design using the insert option, you cannot modify the model here. You have to go back to the original design, make the change there, save it, and then come to the um, design that you brought it into, uh, update it by clicking on the little flag and that's how you make changes. I will point out, notice here, you see the little link icon there? That automatically tells you that this component here is from a different design that was brought in and it's linked to another design. So you do have the option to break that link. So you can always right click on it and go to break link. And then that's gonna allow you to make changes. So if I, for example, extrude this outer part here, you can see it lets me do that. But doing that just breaks that relationship between the two parts. So making any changes now to this will not affect this at all because they that relationship just won't exist. So, you know, unless you intentionally want to break that link, you know, um, don't do it. <laughs> all right, so let me undo that. I'm gonna bring that link back. And next I'll talk about the derived approach. So let me undo everything here. I'm just gonna undo to where I even brought the um, truck bed in. Um, so, okay, we're gonna go to this design here, the truck bed. And then we're gonna go to create down to derive. And here we get this dialog box. It's gonna ask us the destination. So we can either choose new design or, or existing design. I'll choose existing design. And then the object, um, it's gonna want us to select we're gonna go ahead and select the bed here, this component. So even though I didn't create it as a component, it essentially is one component here, right? You have your top level, and then within that component, you've got your bodies and your sketches. Um, so just remember that. So we'll click OK, and then it's gonna have us choose the design we wanna bring it into. 
I'm gonna scroll down and find my truck cabin here, select it, and you can see it brought it in. So now I'll click move, right click, move copy. Let me select this and let's just move it into place. And I'll show you the difference between the derived option. So the first part of it is exactly the same way, right? Like if um, I go back to the this design here and I do make a change, like let's go ahead and extrude this out. I click save and then go back to my other design here. Uh, and you notice I get the flag there telling me it's out of date. Go ahead and click on it and it will remove that um, back portion there. So it will update it. But here's the big difference now. I can actually make changes to this design. So if I wanted this truck bed here to be uh, longer, for example, I can select that and extrude it out and it will let me make that change or maybe make it shorter, um, whatever I want. But notice that, so let me make it just really short just to show the difference here. Notice that the change here does not affect the original design. This stays the same and it can let me change this as much as I want. Um, so in a nutshell, the difference is with the derived option, you can still make changes to your original model and it'll go ahead and bring those forward to your current design or your assembly that you have it in. Um, but you can also make changes in that assembly to this design here and those changes cannot go back to the original design. So this stays protected. But let's say you wanna explore some options here you know, you have the option of doing that. Okay, now let me show you how I was able to take advantage of this feature with my gingerbread house model. So I took this model and I created a derived model and then I went ahead and arranged everything. You see, even though I took all the walls and I rearranged them, the original design here didn't get affected, right? So I can do anything to it. It's not gonna push those back to the original design. It keeps this intact, which is what I want. Now, I'll show you how um, it worked the other way too. So when I arranged it, I realized, oh man, I forgot to punch out this door here, you know, meant to do that. And instead of making the change here and now having sort of two different designs, what I did is I went back to the original design. I went to the component here, so that's my front wall, and found the feature there. Uh, so let's see, it's one of these extrusions. So there it is. I did the window, but forgot to do the door. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let's see, command or control select the door also. Click OK. And now that's punched all the way through. I'll hit save, click OK. And then I could go back to my flat pack design here. And since it's derived, I'll get the little flag saying, hey, you made a change, click on that. And watch, keep your eye on the door here. And Fusion goes ahead and pushes that change to it. So even though this looks nothing <laughs> like this, you know, let's go back to the top level component here. They're linked in a way that I can still make a change. And even though this is now laid flat pack and I've got all sorts of other things going on here, it's still able to carry that change, which is super useful uh, because even though this is flat packed, I don't have to go back and like rearrange it every time I want to make a change or end up with two different designs that, you know, I'm left wondering what did I change in one and not the other. So I can just keep making my changes to the original design and just push those through to here and, and make sure it's updated. And any change I make here does not go back and affect this original design, which I obviously wouldn't want it to. So, okay, I hope that answers the question. If there's anything I left out, just leave it in the comments and I'll answer them there. Or, you know, if it's worth making a new video, I may do that as well. So, all right, guys, I just wanted to come in, um, quickly explain the difference here. Very useful tool. Uh, definitely take advantage of it. It's going to save you a lot of time uh, if you use it correctly, rather than trying to juggle two different designs. If you're looking to get started with Fusion 360, make sure to check out my quick start course below. I've got a special discount link for my YouTube subscribers. Also, I wanna give a huge shout out to my new Patreon supporters, 
Alexander Marante, Trevor Taylor, Tim Ford, Salash Desai, and Ed Zaharis. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate the support you give me. All right, I will be back in a few with a new video.